Good morning. Welcome to the San Francisco Interfaith Council virtual interfaith prayer service for Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Birthday celebration, justice and hope. Hosted by San Francisco Interfaith Council. Produced by the San Francisco COVID Command Center. A few housekeeping items. Audio, video, and chat will be monitored and recorded to keep a record and tra for trading and all quality assurance. Audio, video, by default, audio partic all participants will be muted and video will be turned off to minimize distractions. To submit a question or comment, select the chat button at the bottom of your screen and send a message to Q&A. They will be shared with the speakers after the meeting. Thank you. San Francisco is still experiencing a dangerous COVID-19 surge. You can take the following actions in order to save lives. Stay home as much as you can. Do not gather with people from outside your household, whether indoors or outdoors. If you must go out, make sure to wear a mask. If you have been exposed to COVID-19 or have symptoms, follow guidelines about quarantining. Support is available by calling 628-217-6101 or by calling 311. Together, we will recover. A reminder, you can save lives and stop the spread of COVID-19 by getting tested through your healthcare provider. If you have symptoms or have been exposed to COVID-19 but don't have health insurance or can't get tested through the provider, please visit sf.gov forward slash get tested SF or call 311 for information on getting tested at a city run testing location. Thank you again for joining us this morning I, for the San Francisco Interfaith Council virtual prayer service, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I will now hand it over to our executive director of San Francisco Interfaith Council, Michael Pappas. Thank you so much, Hafisa, and to our wonderful tech team that provides this platform. Good morning, I'm Michael Pappas, and on behalf of the San Francisco Interfaith Council, I wanna welcome you to this morning's Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Interfaith Observance. This virtual gathering is offered in the spirit of the annual March and Interfaith Celebration hosted by our council at the Yerba Buena Gardens. We are particularly grateful for the presence of our member of Congress, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi, and our Mayor, the Honorable London Nicole Breed, two leaders of great faith who have been called to rise to this moment in history to ensure American democracy and the protection, health, and safety of us all amidst this unprecedented pandemic. It's appropriate that we should come together today for prayer and thanksgiving, as not only was Dr. King a pastor of immeasurable faith, but every social justice and civil rights movement marked in our nation's history has been led by leaders of faith. In particular, here in San Francisco, in the early days of the civil rights movement, before there was a San Francisco Interfaith Council, faith leaders from every tradition came together under the auspices of the Conference of Religion, Race, and Social Concerns to proclaim with a unified voice the Almighty's call for freedom and equality for all. The January 6, 2021 domestic terrorist attack on the United States Capitol is a painful reminder that Dr. King's dream has yet to be fulfilled. As we and the entire globe witnessed those with hate in their hearts and malice in their souls violently attempt to put asunder the very foundation of liberty and freedom upon which this great nation was built. But in the spirit of Dr. King, the voices of righteousness and truth thankfully prevailed. Our work as people of faith is far from over. Sadly, more than a half a century later, we find ourselves gathered at a surreal time when our nation has never been more divided, when basic human and civil rights have never been more threatened, and when the ugliness of racism and discrimination are at a dangerous precipice. As is voiced in the theme of this year's MLK Day observance, we see justice and hope on the horizon. If that is so, dear people of faith, 
let us be resolute and vigilant in our pursuit of justice so that we may know true hope. And may our time together this morning inspire us to walk together with Dr. King spiritually, hand in hand with one another, socially distanced, of course, in our collective quest for freedom and equality for all. It gives me great, uh, uh, it gives me great joy to uh, welcome the chairman of the board of the San Francisco Interfaith Council, Koshik Roy. I could, I could hardly get the words out, Koshik. Please leave us, uh, if you will. Thank word you. In the interfaith statement. Of course. Thank you so much, Michael, and good morning, everyone. My name is Koshik, and on behalf of the Council's Board, it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to this celebration that, of course, has great significance and import every year, but I think carries a deep poignancy in 2021. As we prepare to close the heartbreaking chapter of the last four years, I don't think any of us back in 2016 could have truly fathomed how far back we would be led on the path of Dr. King's arc of the moral universe. The essence of every religion is captured perfectly by Dr. King's idea of his beloved community, where there is, quote, a redeeming goodwill for everyone, and an overflowing love that does not begin by discriminating between worthy and unworthy people. It begins by loving everyone for their own sakes. Today, compassionate people of every spiritual faith and those who may not prescribe to any faith at all celebrate Dr. King's birthday while we eagerly await new national leadership that will once again strive towards Dr. King's beloved community. I will now share the Interfaith Council's interfaith statement. This is an interfaith community. Whatever our individual belief, it can be freely expressed here with no apologies. If we are invited to offer a prayer in this setting, it should be offered according to the tradition with which we identify. If we are invited to speak on a subject from the perspective of our tradition, we are free to do so without fear of offending those who come from another tradition. We come together as people of faith to learn from each other that we might better understand the multiplicity of faith traditions in our city and in our world. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Koshik, and thank you for your continued leadership as our board chair. Uh, it gives me great joy today uh, to introduce His Eminence Metropolitan Yerasimus of the Greek Orthodox Metropolis of San Francisco. In the early days of his ministry, he served as the archdeacon uh, for His Eminence Archbishop Iacobus, who at the time of the march at Selma was the president of the National Council of Churches and walked hand in hand with Dr. King. Your Eminence, thank you for being with us and we would invite you to offer some words of invocation. Thank you, Michael. Sisters and brothers in the Lord, let us pray. Almighty and heavenly Father, Lord our God, light of all the world, the brilliance of this season of light dazzles the eyes of our souls. You have enlightened us to the understanding that your salvation is from all, for all peoples without exception. We offer our praise and glory to you and you alone. We confess that we have fallen into darkness. Hatred and violence seem to have filled the hearts of so many. And as we look around us, we must confess that some are guilty, but all of us are responsible. 
like the prodigal sons and daughters that we are, we must recognize our condition and come to our senses. Lord, rescue us from the power of this darkness. Lord, today we honor one who taught us to walk in the light. Our brother Martin Luther King Jr. who taught us darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. We humbly ask that you be with us. Fill us with your light so that the splendor of your presence may be revealed to every nation and to all the peoples. For you are the source of life and in your light we shall see light. For you are God, the father of lights and we give glory to you, your co-eternal son and your all holy good and life giving spirit now and forever and to the endless ages. Amen. We would ask now that Rita Simo unmute and, uh, and uh, make the introductions of our uh, wonderful civic officials. It is my distinct honor and privilege to introduce one of nature's and our nation's saints, I may say, if you'll forgive me, Metropolitan. I'm talking about Nancy Pelosi, the Speaker of the House of Representatives and our representative in Congress. Please join me in welcoming Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Thank you very much, Rita Selmo, someone who I have admired, worshiped for so many decades, and you continue to be a source of strength uh, to all of us, an inspiration uh, to aspire for goodness at all times. I'm honored to be introduced by you. I had the pleasure of being with you a number of times on other Zooms uh, last week when we were bringing in uh, the new year. Little did we know when we had the new year that uh, what would be in store for us. But let us get to where we are today. It's an honor to be with all of you, the San Francisco Interfaith Prayer Service for Martin Luther King's birthday. Martin Luther King, a person of great faith. Faith, as, as Michael and Hoshe have said, faith has seen us through so many things. Uh, it has been the start of so many great uh, civil rights initiatives and the rest. And it is a way that people who have challenges survive because their faith, their faith in the goodness of others gives them hope. Dr. King, I actually observed his uh, in, in the Capitol uh, when I was speaking on Friday, which is his actual birthday. Today we observe it as a holiday, but his actual birthday was Friday. And at that time, Christine reminded me of that, Christine and Bella. At that time, I said, as Dr. King said, uh, peace is not just the absence of tension. It is the presence of justice, justice, justice. That is what we have to always strive for. That's what Dr. King was about. And what a blessing he was of God from God uh, to our country, to the world. Uh, just for all time as we go forward. And when I quoted Dr. King, it reminded me of Pope Paul VI, who said, if you want peace, work for justice. Justice, again, whether it's justice in our healthcare, our economy, our justice system, and our environmental justice, justice in every way, fairness. Dr. King said of healthcare, a most uh, inhuman uh, forms of inequality was in healthcare because people could die. He talked about justice uh, in healthcare. 
So I'm honored to be with all of you once again. We usually have several events in the morning and then at uh, Yerba Buena Center and then some on the train and uh, can't celebrate Dr. King enough. This unfortunate situation is that uh, we have to do this virtually, but with it, no less intensity. Same time as we come together, we're reaching a terrible mark. 400,000 people who have died from COVID, many of them victims of the injustice of a healthcare system, many of them not getting the outreach they need for testing, tracing, treatment, uh, vaccinations. We have to make sure, and we will, in 48 hours, 48 hours, we will have a new president of the United States, a values-based leader who cares, truly cares about people, a faith-filled leader who will start his day with a message of faith. And aren't we excited that Kamala Harris will be the vice president of the United States, first woman, first African-American, first Asian-American, just, just a great leader, just fair, just a great word. In any case, uh, I send you regards from a city full of some great sadness for the disrespect that was shown um, by many people uh, to our democracy. It was scary to be in that capital that day. I cared, I would have security, but I cared about my other colleagues, cared about the staff, cared about the custodial workers who keep the place running for us, who now had to clean up after these bozos. But uh, I also want to just share with you that our, my colleague in representing San Francisco, Jackie Spear, she was in a very precarious situation. And it wasn't the first time for her. You know, she was at Jonestown, almost lost her life there. Her life threatened the capital of the United States. Who would ever thought that? But nonetheless, a person of great strength, Jackie Spear, an inspiration to the rest of us. So as we celebrate Dr. King's birthday weekend, a celebration, imagine, you know, it's, it's amazing that he has a monument on the mall that a, na a day is named for him. It, it is, it's, it's so exciting. What's really important is that we never forget the guidance he gave us, always continue to be inspired by it. Justice, justice. Now we do know that faith is a gift and that not everybody has received the gift of faith. Uh, we pray that they will. Uh, the um, Metropolitan, thank you for your beautiful words of faith. I know that in the world we are all responsible for everything that happens, uh, but I do believe that one of our responsibilities is to have justice for everyone, including bringing people to justice who were so disrespectful of our constitution, our democracy, our capital, a citadel uh, to democracy. So. Little did I know when we would be coming together this year that we'd be doing it virtually. Little would I have known that uh, this is our way of life for us to come together and draw strength from each other on Martin Luther King Day weekend. Uh, and little would we know that we would be doing so with 25,000 National Guardsmen, persons in the capital of the United States to protect us from some people who have been totally misled. Without going too into that, let's just back into uh, the gift of faith that we have, the hope that it gives us in the goodness of others. And nobody was a better teacher for us to do that than Reverend Martin Luther King and to do it in a way that was non-violent, the strength of it all. So again, it's always a joy to to be with all of you virtually now, but I know next year we will actually be together. We'll be here, we'll be there, we'll be at the waterfall, we'll be, uh, um, we'll be able to hopefully 
embrace not only the memory of Dr. King, but the goodness of all of you. Thank you, Michael Pappas, for your extraordinary leadership. Koshik, thank you for, for being a leader, not only in this endeavor, but you have been in so many ways in our community. Metropolitan, it's an honor to be with you. Rita Semmel, Rita Semmel, Rita Semmel, say her name three times. It's magical. She is so remarkable. Such a great mentor, teacher, inspiration, person of faith. Thank you, Rita, for being who you are and for sharing so much with the rest of us. Uh, I wish you a happy Mar Reverend Martin Luther King Day and all that that implies in terms of justice, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you all for the opportunity to spend some time with you. My schedule now will depend on the security issues here. So if you see me slip away, I'm still with you virtually, if not virtually, virtually in this show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Speaker. Oh, may I say one more thing? How proud we are of Mayor Breed. She's been a leader, not only in our community, but one recognized in the country for the humanity that she has brought to this, to everything she does, but especially now with a COVID crisis and, and, and the wisdom and goodness that she has brought to it. She's made us all very, very proud. Thank you, Mayor Breed. Thank you, Speaker Pelosi, and thank you for that wonderful introduction of Mayor Breed. You leave me not, with not much to say about her, but to echo your words and to welcome her to this meeting for us and to say how grateful we are for her leadership in this community. Please welcome our mayor, the Honorable London Breed. Thank you so much, Rita, and thank you, Madam Speaker. Good morning, everyone. I am so excited to be here with the Interfaith Council uh, and Speaker Pelosi, thank you for your thoughtful words and all that you're doing in our capital, fighting for the very principles our country was founded on. Your work and commitment to this nation continues to be an inspiration to all of us. And we are so proud and honored that you represent San Francisco. This time last year, it was such a joy to be able to gather together in person for this, this tradition marching for freedom and justice in honor of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and in celebration of community and service. None of us could have anticipated that this is where we would be a year later. But the values that this event celebrate, celebrates, tolerance, acceptance, and serving our community have been what has helped us persevere through this pandemic. And they are what continue to push us to fight for equity and justice in everything that we do. The values that Dr. King stood for are even more important than ever as we face a real turning point in our city and across our country. While this past year has seen a lot of hardship and difficulties, we've also seen an uprising of hope, hope for a better future, for a better country, where as Dr. King said, a person is not judged by the color of their skin. I know many of us have been hurting after what happened earlier this month in Washington, DC, and just last year with the killing of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and far too many others. But we have seen where hatred and inciting violence gets us in the past. We must do the work to do better, to rise above and beat that hatred back with love and racial acceptance in the spirit of Dr. King as we honor him today. And we can do that work right here in San Francisco. We can do that by holding ourselves accountable at City Hall to enact policies and legislation that are equitable and do not harm people more than it would help them. By responding to this pandemic with a focus on equity, making sure we have enough testing and resources so that those who are most at risk of getting COVID-19 are cared for. By making sure our essential frontline workers have what they need to do their jobs and that we do our part by staying home, distancing and wearing masks to make sure that our hospitals are not overrun with patients. 
by providing equitable access to jobs, housing, education, and other resources so people can thrive and live to their fullest potential. This work does not stop just because of COVID-19. We have had to find innovative new ways to adapt to the pandemic while still providing crucial services. I am so proud of how San Franciscans have stepped up to the plate and responded in such incredible ways. The Interfaith Council has been an integral part of this work through hosting these workshops, distributing information to congregations across the city and continuing to be an organization that is committed to empowering and supporting all San Franciscans. And by making sure our mental and our spiritual health are nurtured and maintained as we deal with the loneliness and isolation that has come with this pandemic. But we know we have a long way to go. We have hope with the vaccine, but we know it's a marathon and not a sprint to get everyone vaccinated. As we roll out the vaccine in San Francisco, we have the locations, but we do not have all the vaccines we need. Every vaccine in our possession is either a second dose for someone who has already received their first dose or someone who is scheduled to receive their first dose. We are at the mercy of the federal government and the state on the supply of the vaccines, but we are ready when we receive them and we ask for your understanding and patience. And I do have hope with our new president-elect and our new vice president-elect that we will work together to get on this road of recovery. A vice president that will provide historic representation in one of the highest offices in our country, one who is from the Bay Area, who represented San Francisco, one who has fought for the people in her community throughout her career and will continue that fight in the White House which we desperately need after these past four years. Even with brighter days ahead of us, there is still so much work to be done to not only be COVID-19, but also to root out systemic racism and economic inequality, even here in San Francisco. We are in the midst of a historic moment, but we need to use this momentum from all of those who rose up and peacefully protested this past summer to fight for equal rights, to create real and lasting change. I'm committed to doing the work with all of you. Thank you everyone for continuing this important tradition, even though these are very difficult times. Last year challenged us like never before. And because San Francisco is a resilient city and we have been through challenging times in the past, I have hope for a brighter future. I have hope because Dr. King's message of love and equality continues. Today, we celebrate the life of a man who taught us all the important, all, taught us all the importance of never giving up and fighting to, to fight to make the world a better place. So to honor him, let's keep his spirit alive in the work that we do to serve others with love and compassion, which could finally help us realize his dream of a brighter future for this country and this world. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Breed. I'm Noah Griffin, the founder and artistic director of the Cole Porter Society. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. Good morning and assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. My name is Hala Hijazi and I serve on the Human Rights Commission and a member of the San Francisco Muslim Community Center and the Islamic Society of San Francisco. 
Before I read the excerpt from Letter from Birmingham Jail, um, dated April 16, 1963, I'm reminded in, 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 in honor of Martin Luther King, I need to share uh, a hadith that's a Muslim hadith about um, a people of faith. And when they asked the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what are the best Islamic traits? And the Prophet Muhammad, without skipping a beat, said, feed the people, greet those whom you know and those whom you do not know, and visit the sick. And in, during this pandemic and during the state of our affairs, these words could not be more important and powerful. Mark, Dr. Martin Luther King said, I am cognizant of the interrelatedness of all communities of states. I cannot sit idly by in Atlanta and not be concerned about what happens in Birmingham. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects us all indirectly. Never again can we afford to live with the narrow, provincial, outside agitator idea. Anyone who lives inside the United States can never be considered an outsider anywhere within its bounds. Now is the time to make the real promise of democracy and transform our pending national elegy into a creative psalm of brotherhood. Now is the time to lift our national policy from the quicksand of racial injustice to the solid rock of human dignity. Thank you and God bless you. We'll walk hand in hand. We'll walk hand in hand. We'll walk hand in hand today. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we'll walk hand in hand today. Good morning. My name is Marvin K. White. I am the minister of celebration at Glide Memorial Church. And I'll be reading an excerpt from Beyond Vietnam, A Time to Break Silence, the speech that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered at Riverside Church on April 4th, 1967. This call for worldwide fellowship that lifts neighborly concern beyond one's tribe, race, class, and nation is in reality a call for an all-embracing and unconditional love for all men. This oft misunderstood and misinterpreted concept so readily dismissed by the Nietzsche's of the world as a weak and cowardly force has now become an absolute necessity for the survival of men. When I speak of love, I am not speaking of some sentimental and weak response. I'm speaking of that force which all of the great religions have seen as the supreme unifying principle of life. Love is somehow the key that unlocks the door which leads to ultimate reality. The Hindu, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Buddhist belief about ultimate reality is beautifully summed up in the first epistle of St. John. Let us love one another. For love is God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. We shall all be free. We shall all be free. We shall all be free today. 
Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall all be free today. Good morning. I'm Reverend Elaine Donlin from the Buddhist Church of San Francisco. And I'll be sharing an excerpt from Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, August 28th, 1963. I say to you today, my friends, so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering with the heat of injustice sweltering with the heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. We are not alone, we are not alone, we are not alone today, oh deep in my heart I do We are not alone today. Good morning. My name is Dr. Mary Wardell Garadizzi. I serve as the Vice Provost of Diversity and Community Engagement at the University of San Francisco, the President of the San Francisco Library Commission, and a Board of Director for the San Francisco Interfaith Council. This morning, I'm going to continue reading an excerpt from I Have a Dream from August 28th, 1963. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with its vicious racist, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, the rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. This is our hope. This is a faith that I go back to the South with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to work together, to pray together, to struggle together, to go to jail together, to stand up for freedom together, knowing that we will be free one day. This will be the day when all of God's children will be able to sing with a new meaning. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee, I sing, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, 
from every mountainside, let freedom ring. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the day when hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place on which our Father sighed. We have come over a way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of slaughtered. Out of the gloomy past, till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, now who has brought us thus far on the way? Now who has by thy might led us into the light? Keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places our God where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand. May we forever stand true to our God, true to our native land. I'm Rabbi Jessica Zimmerman Graf, the senior rabbi at Congregation Sheriff Israel here in San Francisco and I share these words of benediction. We gather today to reaffirm our commitment to the dream of Dr. King and to honor all who have worked to uphold his vision. We take responsibility for the injustice in our midst and promise not to rest until we have banished injustice entirely. We shall overcome. May moral clarity guide us and spiritual audacity embolden us. As Dr. King famously quoted the biblical prophet Amos in his I Have a Dream speech, we will not be satisfied until justice rolls down like water and righteousness 
like a mighty stream. Amen. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome today. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome. We shall overcome today. Thank you to all of the participants for having created this beautiful mosaic of equality, social justice, love, peace, and hope. And as we are saying thank you, I would like to recognize two uh, individuals who are on this call uh, who deserve recognition. The first is my mentor, friend, colleague, the Reverend Dr. Amos C. Brown, uh, the pastor of the historic Third Baptist Church, president of uh, the local chapter of the NAACP, and one of five students in the only class that Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King uh, taught at Morehouse College. Uh, Reverend Brown has been a leader in civil rights and a staunch supporter of the San Francisco Interfaith Council, a friend and supporter. I also would like to recognize the past chair of the San Francisco Interfaith Council, Deacon G.L. Hodge of the uh, Providence Baptist Church. G.L. is the ambassador, if you will, uh, to the Bayview community and uh, has uh, been a great counselor. Uh, and as many of you uh, will recognize him, the one with the bullhorn who is leading you in the march and continuing to inspire us. As we say thank you, I wanna say a special thank you uh, to Cynthia Zambukas uh, of the San Francisco Interfaith Council, uh, who has uh, been of great support, as well as to our tech team, John McKnight, Trey Russell Allen, Becky LaDulce, Maggie Matson, and Hafisa Salabai. Not only today on this federal holiday are they working, but for the past 35 weeks plus, uh, they have provided the platform for our weekly online briefings for faith leaders. Friends, let us, uh, let us rejoice in this day and let us continue uh, to embody the words of Dr. King as we seek justice and hope and peace for our nation. This concludes today's uh, program and interfaith service. Walk in peace. <laughs>